Hockey is such a beautiful game. The NHL itself keeps getting in its own way, but nothing warms my heart more than seeing vulcanized rubber on a sheet of ice. This year is as unpredictable as ever, and 32 teams have goals and aspirations they all want to reach. Let's go over them, shall we? Is this team gonna develop anything besides bed sores? How many prospects has this team burned through and thrown away over the past four or so years? Has to be plenty. There are some positives, though, mainly in locking up Troy Terry long-term, plus getting Drysdale and Zegras on bridge deals. Even if they did their best to piss them both off by lowballing negotiations to hell and back, it leads to a bigger problem. They're stuck in neutral, and hopefully a much-needed coaching change can move them forwards for once. My question is if it's too late to keep John Gibson long-term. Is he too far gone? Especially with the defense in front of him the past few seasons, it's been ugly. Just ignore it for now. Make sure you don't fuck up Leo Carlson and Mason McTavish as well. You can at least manage that, I hope. Arizona is still trudging along in the desert. They suffered a very painful setback in Tempe and are still trying to get water out of a stone down there. The team, on the other hand, is making some decent progress. Youth is starting to emerge as core pieces of the roster, and they still have an arsenal of draft picks to play with, not to mention solid one-year rentals that can be flipped at the deadline. In regards to their playoff ambitions, outside chance this season. Give it another year or two before we really discuss it. But the Oats all eyes are on one man this season. Logan Cooley is going to be a stud. God bless the Pittsburgh-based talent and his ascension to greatness. He was a Capitals fan growing up? Kid's dead to me. The ultimate meme must suffer blows they feared would eventually come to pass. Life without Bergeron and Krejci. Losing such excellent centers is a painful reminder that greatness is fleeting. Last year was their best shot at winning another cup. And they blew it. That being said, they must trudge on. Brad Marchand is the rightful new captain of the club. Plus, they brought back Emil and Lucic in his Twilight for fan service. The Bruins should be all right, but my main concern is with overperforming parts last year. They have quality depth, and their defense is sound. But is their goalie tandem going to do that again? I'm personally expecting regression. How much we're talking depends on how they adapt to self-imposed adversity. I can't believe we're living in a world where the Sabres have legitimate expectations again. The end of last year showcased that they could be something special with time. With a young core oozing with talent, adding even more quality talent onto it, plus the full year of Devon Levi and UPL and Nets. I don't want to jump to conclusions here, but this could be the moment they break the playoff list curse. Rasmus Dahlin is emerging into a franchise defenseman. And with the massive extension he just got, he's getting paid like it too. Oh, and Power, you're next on the delivery list. Here's your big boy contract. In theory, this team should be very fun to watch. A nice blend of youth, speed, skill, and the unicorn known as Tage Thompson. If goaltending is as good as I think it could be, this could be a fascinating group. Now watch this segment be the kiss of death. One of the league's most aggravating teams. All you can hope is that the stench of Daryl Sutter's reign doesn't linger for long. His tenure turns sour faster than milk in the sun. And now they have to try and salvage what they can. The first repair is an extension from Mikel Backlund. By the way, meet your new captain. Secondly, the relocation rumors can officially cease. The new arena has been rubber stamped and initial work is about to get underway. Now only if that could stop the Flames from constantly underachieving. A metric ton of players all suffered rougher career low seasons. And the change in the executive branch hasn't changed the fact that they're jammed up against the cap. They need Jacob Markstrom at his best. Plus the ability to perform in the damn clutch. I hate to say it, but this might be the last year of both Hannafin and Lindholm here. If not for their desire to leave the cap situation in general. The summer of discontent is a long one in Hurricanes country. Last year felt like the year. And then Sergei Bobrovsky and Matthew Kuchuk came in and whacked it repeatedly with a crowbar. Regardless of what happens this season, this feels like the best shot they have of reaching the cup. A lot of players are going to be due big money in the offseason. To be fair, they are keeping a big piece in Sebastian Ajo around. But guys like Pesci and Natchez might not be long for this team. The Canes have significant talent throughout the roster, but do they lack the true superstar that will take them over the top? Bunting and Orlov are solid additions, but they're not transcendent talents. Check back with them in April. That's when the real test begins. It takes the death of an old owner to plant the seeds of something new. Dollar Bill's death led to Kane Taves and the Tainted Dynasty. Rocky's passing leads to the new generational talent. Welcome Connor Bedard's long-awaited debut in the NHL. Regardless of everyone calling the draft lottery rigged, he is the league's new savior. And they're doing something incredible with him. 
actually marketing his skills. I know, insane to believe. The team itself is still undergoing a deep rebuild. And it's gonna take a year or two before the Encore is ready to legitimately fight, but they'll be must-watch for Bedard alone. Let him and Taylor Hall make magic and call it a day. Seth Jones, too. They're not gonna be able to get rid of him. Last year felt cursed. This year feels the same. When you're without your heart and soul captain for two years on end, it's a tough thing to deal with. Overhauling the forward core with new pieces will help a touch. Ryan Johansson and Ross Colton come to mind, but the key for them this year is to limit the injury bug. Easier said than done. It made 2023 feel lost, despite the regular season success. More injuries this time around won't be as forgiving. There isn't a nice glossy cup for you to reminisce about. It's lost a touch of its luster. The hunger to win again will return. And the Avs definitely have the talent to run it back. Will the gods grant them favor in health? If yeah. Ansos is any indication, it might be tough. Please take this nice extension of Devontae's as consolation. Everyone and their mother knew that hiring Mike Babcock in 2023 was a terrible idea. Yet we still underestimated how bad it could be. It took about 10 seconds before everything went to shit. Turns out a little birdie leaked out that he was forcing players to give them their phones to look through their photos. Babcock held Boone Jenner hostage and said it was just a bonding exercise. But considering his past reputation, the public didn't agree. It was apparently a one-strike job. Instantly fucking off from the team. He didn't even make it to training camp! Mike, our expectations for you were in the negative! And you didn't even hit those! Sadly, this might be the best thing to happen to the Jackets. They're an incredibly young team. And they might have been further ruined if he were to stay here for long. Clean slate. Let's just forget this ever happened and hope they can stay healthy and their prospects can properly develop. The stars are on the cusp of something truly great. Last year proved that in so many ways. The emerging youth on the roster. Jason Robertson and Miro Haskinen becoming superstars. Excellent veteran influence at forward and defense. And adding even more to it with Matt Duchesne. If there were a year to finally break through that glass ceiling, this is it. Getting so close to the final can lead to two outcomes. The epiphany needed to win or utter desperation. For Dallas, like many teams this season, their goals are in April and beyond. Just keep steady in the regular season and be ready to go in the playoffs. Trust in Jake Ottinger. He'll want revenge after falling flat last time around. In year six of the Iser plan, impatience is starting to wear thin. We know an empire isn't built overnight, but we can usually see some signs of progress by this point. For the Red Wings, it hasn't really happened yet. Flashes of things that could be there, but it tends to be undone by four or five other factors. Stevie's combo of savvy and oddly questionable moves lead to a mixed bag. It leads to the question that needs to be answered. Will Detroit finally emerge as legitimate playoff contenders? There is some sexy talent here, but then you look at the question marks. Will the defense mold into an even killed unit? Will the goaltending manage to stay both healthy and consistent? Can they find this thing known as depth to help them out? This is an insanely critical year for both the Wings and Iserman. Detroit fans have left them the longest leash imaginable. But what happens when they run out of rope? Every year we ask the same damn questions about the Oilers. Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl are some of the best weapons in the game today. Can they finally find ways to complement their greatness? Edmonton's tried pretty much every damn thing they can think of to do so. Depth signings, huge acquisitions on forward and defense, big goaltending contracts, but very little of it has worked. Sisyphus continually rolls the puck up the hill, only for it to end up for five goals behind his own net. For every good move from Matthias Ekholm, there's Byers remorse for Darnell Nurse. Flamed out forward prospect after flamed out forward prospect in a mass grave. Eternal frustration. And they can do nothing to prove it wrong until playoff time. Let the talent shine. This is the only way to atone for postseason sin. There is a blood price to pay for making it to the cup finals. Montreal had to deal with it a few years ago and you do as well, Florida. There are still plenty of injuries to sift through for that deep run. Montour, Ekblad, and Bennett will be out for at least the start of the year. Maybe longer, depending on the case. Besides that, the Panthers are mostly the same team as last year. A group that has the upside of a true cup contender. They proved that a few months ago. However, consistency in playing up to that ability has been the concern. To try again, Kachuk will have to repeat what he did last postseason. Getting Spencer Knight back should help out a ton on the goalie front. Now, can Bobrovsky return to game-stealing form once again? Or was that just a blip on an Albatross contract? 
how they weather the opening storms will be very telling towards their future. I don't care that the kings of amazing talents littered throughout the roster. I don't care that they have a brand new Pierre-Luc Dubois to add to the spoils of their center depth. I can't take a team's ambition seriously when they're trotting out Cam Talbot and Phoenix Copley as a goalie tandem in 2023. There's a legit argument that it's one of the worst in hockey, and until they fix it or pull rabbits out of their ass, it's hard to look at them as legitimate. Okay, that's a bit harsh. The well-rounded fruits of a rebuild have been emerging for a few seasons now, and their embarrassing riches of center depth should make them strong. Just wait until Byfield and Bjornfoot hopefully emerge into core pieces. Todd McClellan, here's an extension for you. It's only for one year, though. Like with your goalie tandem, you'll make them. The eternal hamster wheel of the wild. It's doomed them for many seasons now. No matter what they do, there's no end in sight to it. Bold moves were tried by Bill Guerin to get them off, but the results have unfortunately been the same. They're still paying for the sins of the past, mainly in dead cap hits. Minnesota can bring in great talents and extend them in the case of Ryan Hartman, but little about this roster screams elite. Kaprizov will always be great. Boldy is right behind him. And Eric Sinek is one of the best defensive centers in the game, but otherwise it's hoping all the cards line up in order. As Jared Spurgeon's out for a few weeks, it's the first challenge. As Flurry has his swan song, Philip Gustafson and Jesper Wallstead look to be the future in net. And it'd be awfully nice if a few other top prospects emerged as great options to avoid more first round exits. Paging Marco Rossi. A long dark tunnel has to have a way out, doesn't it? Years of drifting and suffering for the great run of the past has fresh young faces to try and push them free. It might not be this year, but there is plenty of promised litter throughout the roster. It's wondering when they'll tap into such a reserve. Will they gain consistency in all three zones? Will Slavkovsky take the next step towards becoming an elite winger in the NHL? Will they ever find an adequate replacement for the great Carey Price? Of course, they won't be able to replace him with one man, but can Allen and Montembeau hold up between the pipes? Right now, they lack high-end power, but they can develop it. It just might be in a year or two. I've been surprised before, however. A new era is rising in Nashville. The David Poyle administration is giving way to the Eggman Empire. Barry Trotz will make his mark immediately, shaking up a stale core and coaching staff for new blood, like Ryan O'Reilly. He's a heart and soul guy. He'll work if his body holds up. They trust in Yusei Soros, the religious deity of the Predators. In all honesty, he's one of the few things that makes them relevant. And he nearly dragged them to the playoffs despite a shitload of injuries last season. Barry seemingly trying the same formula that brought him success elsewhere. Do more with less. Insulate with strong defense and goaltending. And surprise opponents with great balance in the forward core. Although Andrew Brunette is an offensive mind. Maybe he adds a new wrinkle or two to the formula. This is your time, New Jersey. Last year was merely a taste of what you could be. Humiliating the Rangers like that? It felt like old times. You spent years desperately trying to push out of rebuilding mode. And now is the confirmation. When Jack Hughes is blossoming into the franchise center, we thought he'd be optimism is at a fever pitch. Now add Tyler Toffoli to it. Add Luke Hughes to the back end. Add a full year of Akira Schmidt and Timo Meyer. Add Alex Holtz's hopeful development. Their upside isn't bursting through the ceiling, it's reaching the stars. Expectations are sky high, and for very good reason. Who knew that Lindy Ruff was more than a placeholder for this team? Here's an extension for your work, sir. Develop team chemistry through the regular season and get ready to kick ass in April. Nothing else to say. The Islanders have been roughly the same team for about the past five or so seasons. An eternal underdog that fights for every point it can, lives off table scraps until it somehow makes it to the big dance but doesn't have enough juice to go the distance. It's admirable, but after a while the shtick gets tiresome. It's not the worst outcome in the world. They'll always be competitive with Ilya Sorokin and Semyon Varlamov, but it's always relied on the men in front of them to make a push. With both netminders extended long term, they should at least be set in between the pipes. They just need more high-end power in the lineup. Bo Horvat, they're hoping, will add to it. Simon Holmstrom and Oliver Wallstrom, they're hoping, will add to it. They'll need to as well. Josh Bailey was the first domino to fall in the old core. You don't want more to fall before you can replace them. You're gonna see more quit in New York this time around. Last year went from relentless optimism about the state of the team to realizing that they have been trending sideways the whole time. The much ballyhooed rentals of last season are gone. Hope you like Eric Gustafsson and Blake Wheeler, because they're the replacements. Their fall from grace last year leaves us with more questions than usual. Do the rags of the right pieces in the core to take them far? Will Kako and Lafreniere come anywhere close to their upside when drafted? 
Is there a thing called defensive depth on this team? Or will they be stuck in the crutch known as Shostyorkin once again? It's put up or shut up time, Rangers. The grace period for your window is over. We need results. When I see Ottawa, I think of a team that's still trying to find its identity. There are pieces of what could be here, especially in their young core, but it's been consistently undone by injuries and bad luck. They believe the answers are here. They threw a lot of money at Jake Sanderson just to make sure of it. However, the Senators have to solve their concerns in between the pipes. Cam Talbot didn't work out last year, which is why they threw a lot of money at Eunice Corpusello to try and rectify the situation. A bit of Vladimir Tarasenko as well, so there is some hope that they can do something with what they have assembled. It's crucial that the Sens do well this year for the sake of jobs in the executive branch. A new regime's in town, and I don't think coasting along is good for business. Observation years mean a lot of pressure. But there's one big question remaining, and his name is Shane Pinto. Are they going to come to terms with him? Or is he persona non grata like Alex Forment? I think every Flyers fan in existence got their wish. The team is no longer looking to do the half-in, half-out bullshit that's been their specialty for about a decade. They'll be rebuilding. And I mean an actual rebuild. Shutting Kevin Hayes and other pieces is just the start. Travis Sanheim is probably next on the block. Not to mention a few more vets that'll be flipped at the deadline or around those parts. I mainly wonder about Carter Hart. Does he still have a future in the organization? Or do they sell high on him for a package of excellent futures? It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. I'm fortunately not paid to speculate on it, so I'm not even going to try to decide for you. I'll give you credit, at least you guys have an apparent clear vision for once. Kyle Dubas has his marching orders from his new bosses from above. Squeeze every last bit of juice remaining from the old core. Time is running very short. And some say it's too late to do anything about it, but don't tell the Penguins that! They've already went all in to the end. Keep pushing to glory or do. You know what helps with that? An elite defenseman in Eric Carlson. Reforging the bottom six to not be a complete joke. The goals are sky high, and they can be achieved. If you ignore the huge question marks in durability, team defense, and goaltending, of course. They're still the oldest team in hockey by a country mile, but they did get Gensel back earlier than expected. Do or die time, Pittsburgh. The rest of the league is eager to see your demise. Will you prove them wrong? You thought you were rebuilding these past few years? Baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. San Jose is now free of the Eric Carlson contract. They got far less than expected, but you're free of it with limited retention. This is the bridge year between a torturous past and an uncertain future. All we know for certain, there will be tanks driving through at high speed. We've got a few more of Doug Wilson's eight-year blessings to go with a bunch of awful contracts eaten to get rid of Carlson. Be ready to swallow. We'll see you in a few years. One goal in mind for the Blues. Fix anything that led to last season's demise. The St. Louis squad lacking heart and passion has never been in this team's DNA. The fortunate thing is that they still have young talent and veteran influence to get them out of this funk. Now a few things need to happen before they even think about that, however. Will Colton Pareko snap out of his decline and return to the elite defenseman he was? Will anyone on the defense play up to their contract and ability if we're thinking about it? In fact, is Jordan Bennington gonna save pucks instead of physically attack everyone in sight? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Management believes they have the ability to remain a steadfast playoff contender. But if we're talking another cup for this core, I honestly don't know. It might be a bit before they get another chance. Kraken fans, this is a new experience for you. If you're familiar with the Seahawks or Mariners, this year is when the honeymoon for a team begins to end. With the taste of playoff victory last season, expectations are starting to take hold. There are a few minor changes in terms of depth players, but most of the core and roster remains intact from last season. There's still a team that can roll four lines but the development of Matty Beneers and Shane Wright will be of crucial importance. The hopes for the Kraken are that, and if Phil Grubauer can maintain his excellent playoff form for longer stretches of time. It was a godsend for them considering how rough he'd look since donning this uniform. Remember Seattle, you have about five years of not winning the cup before you're deemed as inferior to the Golden Knights. Comes a time for every cup team where you must pay up for all those deep runs. Considering how things have gone for the Lightning this offseason, that time may be coming soon, if not already. You'll argue with me, no, Tree, all they need is Vasilevsky and they'll be relevant in the hockey landscape. Well, there's an issue with that. He's out long-term with injury. You're down to Jonas Johansson in net. 
With that, a high mileage core, a tanner to no deal looking disastrous, and the wolves of the Atlantic pounding at your door, the challenge will be greater than before. Not to mention that this may be the last year of Steven Stamkos in a lightning uniform. Negotiations between him and the team have reached an impasse. Considering what he'll command, it might be for the best, but it still doesn't make it sting any less. All you can hope is that this team doesn't end up like Josh Archibald and simply walk away from the game itself. The best groups do tend to go out with a whimper. The good news is that we can finally stop talking about goddamn first round exits this time around. Now we talk about if they can make it past the second round. In all seriousness, Toronto's in a state of flux. The Civil War cost them former boy wonder Kyle Dubas. As Leafs fans want nothing more than to see him fail, they have serious questions about the core four. Austin Matthews in particular the main concern. I have more good news. He's been extended to keep him as a Leaf for a bit to come. The only caveat is that it's only a four-year deal. To be fair, they had no choice. If they lose him, they lose everything. And it's likely William Nylander's time's running short barring a miracle. Toronto may have broken the curse, but the expectations are as high as ever. Especially with a full year of Matthew Nyes and the same damn questions as last season. Just goes through the winter time. Your goals are in the playoffs. If this is supposed to be major surgery, then this is the equivalent of getting a benign birthmark removed. Not much really happened beside the shuffling of some depth pieces. Connor Garland's departure is likely soon, but still to be determined. It's no secret that the Canucks live and die by the glove of Thatcher Demko. If it thrives, they get bailed out of years of bad decisions. Falters, well, all you need to see is what happened last year. It's a critical juncture for Vancouver, if only for one reason. Elias Pettersson. The organization needs to prove that it's worth it for him to sign a long-term deal. They've tried to get weapons around him, yet nothing has worked. Merely flashes of something that turned to smoke. Benning sins are tough to absolve, and they'll have to find a way to atone for them to have a chance. By the way, how's that OEL trade working out for you? You won the cup. That's great. Well done to you on your quest. Now the challenge is to remain eternally steadfast. Tasting from Lord Stanley's chalice just once isn't enough. You want to experience that high over and over again. Not much was done to change the team. After all, why mess with what was successful? Losing an original misfit in Riley Smith stings, but consider how well Barbashev played. It had to be done. The same key for them is at hand. They need to stay healthy. Mark Stone is a bull in a China shop. Except the China's his durability due to his style of play. There won't be much in terms of reinforcements once again. What you see is what you get. Should be plenty of gas left in the tank, right? Best of luck in the title defense. America's capital, Alex Ovechkin continues his chase of the goal record. Say what you will about Washington's decline in heavily aging core, Ovi can still rip howitzers from his office on the power play. What the Capitals truly need, despite more of those cannons, is younger players emerging as core pieces. They're one of the oldest teams in hockey for a reason, and many of their old greats are starting to show signs of wear and tear. They have a few promising youngsters that could fill that role, but will it happen this year? I don't know. I just wonder if trying to chuck things at a wall will do anything. That's also known as their goaltending and gambling on Max Pacioretty. The Caps should be on the fringes of playoff contention, but I don't know about anything else. Why did they throw all that money in term at Tom Wilson anyway? Winnipeg is in a very weird spot. They're not good enough to make a deep run unless every single thing goes right. At the same time, they simply can't just give up and tank to kingdom come. I was expecting a full skill overhaul after an April of no pushback. What we got was probably halfsies. You must think that Wheeler and Dubois was the extent of the locker room cancer. And it was time for Wheeler to go to be fair. The rumors about Hellebuck and Shifley were extensive to say the least. However, the biggest surprises come from the things you least expect. Forget everything you believed about Winnipeg and Chevy. Both Hellebuck and Shifley are locked in long term on matching deals. They'll probably suck on the back end, but surprising to say the least. The Jets are a sleeper team, if mainly due to young talent that is the chance to emerge as key components. In the end, they live and die by Connor. Both of them technically. You want season predictions? Do you really want that? Did you see how bad my World Series prediction was? This would be a terrible thing for hockey. I'll do no such thing. This video's gone on for far too long and it's out far too late for my liking. Now let's watch some of this beautiful game and call it a day.